So, recently, I just participated in the GMTK Game Jam for 2023, and boy, was it a doozy. Long story short, you know, TLDR, my game came in second place overall. So, you know, just like, woo! <laughs> I've been a fan of Game Maker's Toolkit for a really long time, and I've actually done this jam like three or four times maybe, like five times maybe, both in teams and solo. Um, it's pretty neat to see just how much I've grown as like a game developer, and it's pretty awesome to be recognized like that. Seriously though, I am honestly like still super confused as to like what happened. Um, I was super happy with how my game came out, but I really never expected to like even like be in the video or like be recognized at all, so. Thank you um, to those who support me and uh, to all of you who like listen to me just like my stupid rambles, you know, you guys, you're awesome. But um, I digress. If you don't know what a game jam is, um, it's where you create a game from scratch, like start to finish within a given time frame. This can vary like quite a bit, you know, some of them last like a month, uh, some like a week. But GMTK is particularly difficult because it only lasts for two days. 48 consecutive hours, which is pretty challenging, you know, no matter who you are. The theme of this jam, which we only found out about the moment it started, was roles reversed. Essentially, you take a classic concept and turn it on its head. Some examples that were given were like, take Angry Birds, but instead of the birds, you play as the pigs and have to build the houses, or Pong, but instead of playing as a paddle, you play as the ball. The whole theme is really just like one giant in Soviet Russia meme. After learning the theme, uh, I had to take like a whole hour to brainstorm. I just, I really couldn't think of an idea that I liked. Uh, it wasn't for lack of trying, you know. Um, I wrote down pretty much any idea that like plopped in my head, like no matter how viable I thought it was. Some things like a ninja, but he's super heavy or fat and like not stealthy at all. Or maybe it's about a literal roll that you have to come up with a recipe for. Uh, I thought about pinball, but maybe you're the ball. On a side note, a group of friends of mine actually did this idea and it came out pretty good. You know, you should go check them out. Eventually though, I started to think about like genres and what their inverse would look like. What does the opposite of an FPS look like? What about a platformer? After about an hour of just laying in bed and staring at my ceiling, uh, I came to, you know, classic Brick Breaker. You know, it's an oldie but a goodie. Even then, it took me a while to like think about what the opposite style of play would look like for this kind of game. You know, do you place the bricks? Do you control the ball? I actually played a few Brick Breaker inspired games within this jam that used some of these concepts. And they're pretty awesome. You know, I just came to a different conclusion. What does it look like to play as the bricks? I was talking with my wife about this jam and how this was really one of the first times that things just kind of worked out the way they did. So usually I come up with this image in my head of what I want things to look like and rarely do things pan out that way. This was really one of the few times that I managed to accomplish pretty much everything that I wanted and I managed to capture the image that I had. After like a ton of brainstorming and watching the GMTK intro video like a hundred times, I actually got a little inspiration from a different game called, I think it's pronounced Carry On? Carry On? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's funny, um, I've never actually played this game, but based on videos, it looked like there was this mechanic where the more you eat, the bigger you become, and the more health you get. But the bigger you become, the bigger the target you are, and I freaking love this. I wanted something that was kind of like in that vein, and when I started to think about what a reverse brick breaker would look like, it really fit perfectly. I thought, you know, you could be the core of the bricks, and the rest of the bricks are your shields, more or less. So, you know, the more you lose, the smaller you become. And while that might seem bad, it also gives you easier access to, like, tighter areas. And I love this concept. For those that have seen, like, my other stuff, um, I like doing this dynamic camera kind of thing, where the camera, instead of following the character, it'll follow, like, an average point between the player and the mouse. And I applied that to a kind, the kind of shield mechanic I was talking about. When they expand, they spread out, and they reduce your movement speed, and that kind of fits to me within this whole risk versus reward kind of thing. Like, you're covering a wider area, but you're also a little bit more exposed. And when you move them around, you know, you're defending something maybe in front of you, but it leaves you a little bit more exposed from behind. 
Eventually, I thought about being able to shoot back and what that might look like. Uh, and this kind of tied the whole thing together. Like the obvious answer of like what that looks like is, you know, you throw one of your bricks as ammo. And when you do that, you immediately get smaller. Using your own shield as ammunition was like super in line with the whole risk versus reward thing. And I was just like super jazzed for like how perfect it fit, you know. Everything was really just falling into place, just like super nice. And I was just pumped up. You know, all I have to do at this point is, just, you know, actually finish the game. I don't know if I've said this in other videos or not, but my background uh, is actually as an artist. It's what I went to school for, and it's how I got my introduction into game development. I think it's because of this that I kind of get like really nitpicky when it comes to aesthetic. Um, aesthetic doesn't necessarily mean like good graphics. Really, you know, what it is is like, does everything visually sort of fit together in a way that's consistent and appealing? Uh, nothing really irks me more than like playing a game or watching TV or something and it's just really obvious that things have just been kind of like thrown together with no thought as to whether or not they go together. I, I get it, like game dev is hard and sometimes you have to do what you can to get things done. But like this is my hill and freaking I'm, I'm willing to die on it. I wish more people gave more thought to like this particular topic. But for me, luckily in this game, like once again, things just kind of really worked out really well. Like Brick Breaker is an old school game. And when it comes to old school games, the things that come to my mind is like old school arcades and like a really retro kind of thing. It's where I got the idea for the arcade cabinet from our main menu system. Um, I really, really wanted my menus to be in a 3D environment. I just think that kind of thing is like super cool. Cause I took a deep dive in like how to do this using 3D widgets and stuff. I'm not gonna do a tutorial or anything like on how to accomplish this like right now. Uh, maybe people are interested, I might go into that. But uh, suffice to say it worked out. I'm like super happy with how it looks. <sighs> all in all, like I don't really know how to um, wrap this video up. You know, this was a ton of work. Anybody who makes games knows just how much work this kind of thing is. Let alone to do it in like two days. And honestly, to anybody who even attempted this jam, like I congratulate you. You know, we're all on this path of like learning and becoming better game devs. This is what I personally want to do. And I'm still just flabbergasted that like my game was recognized for being kind of sort of decent. <laughs> you know, to anybody who played it at all, like thank you. I appreciate it. Um, to anybody who like decides to take a look at it later on, you know, I hope you enjoy it. I do my best here, you know, I mean, I, all I can say is I, I hope that that shows. I think last of all, you know, I want to thank Mark Brown and the entire GNTK team, if he has one, I don't really know. Um, thanks for contributing to the, this community in a way that lets even the smallest of us shine, even if only for a moment. I'm really looking forward to uh, next year's jam. Man, I guess until then, or until next time, take it easy, YouTube. <laughs>